Hey guys, it's Marshall here and I'm doing a video today on 3D printing. Specifically, a 3D printed DJ table. I wanted to show you this project, how it came to light, how I designed it, built it, and then show it to you. All right, so you might be asking yourself, why did this guy print out this large table? Why didn't he just make this out of wood or something else? Well, there's a couple reasons. One is, I don't have any woodworking tools. I don't have any saws. Um, I don't have nails. I don't have any of that stuff. Now, I could have gone and bought those things that I needed to complete the project out of wood, but guess what? I mean, I would have been, I would have spent more money than I did uh, just in filament. Uh, plus, I already have a 3D printer, so and it's not wasn't doing anything at the time, and I thought, hey, this would be perfect if I can make this work on this 3D printer. Here is the actual design that I came up with. Now, my problem was I needed something that would raise up the Ableton push controllers at the same level as the Newmark M6 mixer, and then also have space for the Surface Pro tablets to sit on top and not have an obstructed view. So previously, before the table, those Surface tablets would obviously sit flat on the table. Surface Pro, uh, or the uh, Ableton push controllers in front of the Surface tablets, and you would have about the lower inch or so of the Surface tablet obstructed because of the push controller in the way. Not only that, it looks kind of weird when you have a three and a half inch tall DJ mixer and then one inch tall Ableton push controllers. So what I did is I went into a program called Onshape. Onshape is a free 3D modeling tool. Um, I'll have a link in the description below if you're interested in checking it out. Full disclosure, not been paid by these guys. They have no idea who I am. I'm just saying this is, was a great tool and that's what I used for this project. It's a 3D modeling tool and it's free. So check it out. So what I needed to do next was figure out how much build volume I have on my 3D printer. Well, I actually already know this. It's a MakerBot Replicator 2X. I have roughly about six inches width, 9.7 inches length, uh, and 6.1 inches in height. So what I needed to do then is break my model up into parts that would fit on that build platform. Now I have a background in manufacturing. I was I worked in machining as uh, a CNC programmer uh, and operator for about 10 years. And so I have a good working knowledge of how to assemble things. Now my idea here was to create something that did not need any uh, conventional hardware, screws, nuts, bolts, anything. I just wanted to print this out, I wanted to put it together and have friction hold everything in place. So what I designed were uh, T-shaped connectors um, and I drew those into the model to break this up and look like this. Okay, and this actually worked out really good. Uh, worked out really well. This table is held together with no glue, no conventional hardware, it's all friction. So to get it apart, I would probably break part of it. Okay, that's how well it, it, it has held together. Now in doing this, um, I needed to figure out how accurate this printer was. I had never really used it to print anything to specific measurements. So what I needed to do was print out a full size couple of parts, put them together and see what happens. This was what I came up with first. These went together. Um, but I would have had to have pounded on this and it didn't really matter. The idea was this is not going anywhere, okay? The same movement. All right, so this is a close up of the part here. Um, you can see it I've got some glue on that still, but uh, the original idea was to create pockets. Um, I ended up making these more solid, but uh, with the pocket idea, it turned out to be not good because you could see here the finish was really awful on that overhang. Uh, even with support material, it didn't look very good. And the pockets also were kind of loose. Um, the edges were pulling away. Um, the other thing was the overall size of these parts came out small. So the overall size um, of the pocket that the push would sit in was actually undersized by about 100 thousandths of an inch. Uh, you can see here, this pocket idea was awful because the edges start pulling away. Um, and I, I just wasn't too happy with that. All right, so that pocket was undersized when I printed those out. So what I needed to do is I adjusted in Simplify 3D the scale and the X and the Y. Uh, and the Z, I think I, I needed to alter a slight amount. Um, it wasn't too much. Now, this is something that happens. There's a couple of things when you manufacture anything. You have to understand the material properties. Now, plastic as, as in this process is heated and spew, spewed out one layer at a time 
uh, to build up a model. Now, as that plastic cools, it's going to shrink somewhat, okay? I'm not sure how much shrinkage I'm getting in the cooldown portion, but the difference between the, the actual measurements that I had and what came out, which was about 50 thousandths per part uh, undersized in the width. So again, from here to here, where the push would sit was too small. And when you put two parts that are 50 thousandths short in the length, that makes them 100 thousandths short total. 100 thousandths is a lot when you're trying to put something into something else. It means it won't fit or it'll fit way too much depending on the direction. In my case, it was too small. So I, I fixed that in the scaling uh, in the 3D slicer, which I use Simplify 3D. Um, and it worked out really well. So the next parts I got off there came out great. They all fit together. Now they were a little tight. I did have to sand the T sections a little bit to where they would fit. Now I didn't want them to just slide together necessarily, except for the ones in the middle. Those are okay because that's the modular portion of the table. If I got a different mixer, I would print out different middle sections uh, to fit that specific mixer. This worked out really well, guys. And this is the final product right here. This project was amazing. It was a lot of fun to have a problem, design a solution, and print it out. R literally print it out, and here it is. Like, put it together, it worked out great. Now, the, this did take a long time. It took me about two months uh, from design, from concept to design to final product. So just be prepared. If, you, if you're interested in 3D printing at all, it's a lot of fun, guys, but it's also very stressful. Um, if Just be prepared for a lot of long nights with the wife or girlfriend really mad at you, okay? <laughs> this takes a long time to get, to get things right, so. All right, so thanks for watching, guys. This was a lot of fun uh, for me to create this. And I'm glad I was able to bring it to you and show it to you. The project took a long time. So if you're interested in printing something like this, I'll have the, I'll have the files up on Thingiverse. I'll put links in the description below. If you like the video, hit the like button. Um, if you like this video also, please subscribe to my channel. I have other videos on uh, music production and things like that. This is my first 3D printing video. I have another project uh, for the printer that I'm going to get working on here pretty soon so i'll have a video for that eventually um but yeah thank you very much for watching guys this was a lot of fun if you have any questions uh let me know follow me on twitter facebook um you know all your usual suspects for the social media i'll have links for all that below and i appreciate you watching thank you very much